about a year ago, around the holidays, my family decided to have a poker tournament. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with the basics of poker. You're dealt two cards, and five more come out on the table with rounds of betting in between. You don't have to play for money, you can just play for fun. The winner, the person with the best hand, gets all the chips. Now, as we're playing, my family members start to lose. First, my older brother Joe, then my older brother Jay, then my mom. That's me, I'm her mom. <laughs> Finally, we're down to two people, me and my older brother, John. Now, I'm dealt a pair of threes, and those are good cards, but not great cards, so I need to be thoughtful about this. Usually, I have a pretty good idea of John's hand based on how he's betting, but not this time. We're both betting big, looking to end this game. The final card comes out on the table, and we both go all in. We turn our cards over, and we're going to tell you what happens next. But first, we want to tell you why, for women of all ages, but especially women Juliet's age. Poker is so much more than just a card game. I started to learn to play poker three years ago, and it's completely changed the way I think about things. Once I saw how much Juliet and her friends were learning playing poker, I started playing too. And I discovered I've been playing poker my whole career. I just didn't know it. It turns out that playing poker doesn't just teach you a really fun card game. Learning poker teaches you skills and lessons you can take with you throughout your entire life, which is why it's such a big problem that poker is played almost exclusively by men. Of the more than 100 million people in the world that play poker, less than 10% are women. If poker was just a card game, that might not matter. But as we're gonna show you, poker is an incredible toolbox for work, and life, and right now, there's only a handful of women taking advantage of it. You hear a lot of theories about how we can give women more access to opportunities. Well, we think the answer is simple. If you want to empower women, you need to teach them how to play poker. Today, we're going to talk about some of the things that poker can teach you, and the first big lesson is playing to win. I first started learning poker along with eight of my other girlfriends, and at first, no one wanted anyone else to lose. If someone was about to bet, here, look at my cards. <laughs> or if someone lost everything, have some of my chips. <laughs> In my own life and career, I see this all the time. Women sacrificing potential success for the sake of others around them. In general, from an early age, men are taught to thrive more on competition. Women, they're taught to thrive more on cooperation. While the ability to cooperate can be an advantage, what happens too often is that women give up the chance to win because they don't want other people to lose. In life, but particularly in business, this mindset won't work. Let me give you an example. There's a public company that goes wrong, really wrong. Announce fraud, trouble with the regulators, and the SEC asks us to step in. Great. As you can imagine, there were some tough choices that had to be made. After we got rid of, rid of more than 65% of the customers, we had to go to court with the remaining customers to enforce our contracts. We played fair, but we played to win. To put it mildly, we did not make many people happy. But because of the choices we made, that company is now the back-end technology for more than 50% of the fintech companies in all of the United States. In poker, you really have two options. You play to win or you lose. And pretty soon you realize winning is fun. A few weeks after I started lessons, I wasn't offering to share my chips or show my friends my cards. I was trying to get my friends out. I was playing to win. I was betting big on my high pairs and using my recently gained knowledge of odds to my advantage. Today, I say this with pride, Juliet's a mean poker player. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Here's the second big thing poker can teach you, how to take risk. A few weeks after I started lessons, I was hanging out with a group of my friends. The guys were bored and decided to set up a poker game. I was excited to join, hoping to show off my new poker skills. I sat down, but I was the only girl willing to do so, even though some of the other girls there had learned poker with me. I was really proud of myself for pulling up a chair, but I was nervous, and it showed. 
I played super cautious. Even if I knew I was almost guaranteed to win a hand, I still wondered, what if someone else has an even better hand? I didn't want to take a risk in front of the boys. Plus, betting aggressively would call attention to myself. I knew the boys would tease me and say, ooh, she's betting big. It felt safer to stay out of the spotlight. So I limped in most of the time. Limping in is poker speak for not betting aggressively. And I played okay, but I didn't win. Again, I continue to see this in life and work. In general, men taking risk without knowing everything, and women needing to know everything before taking a risk. In my own work, I've always told the women you have to have an opinion, but it's actually not enough. You have to act on your opinion. You can't wait until you know for sure you're right. If you think you're right, you have to make a judgment call and bet on it. Imagine this. A senior manager walks into your office and says, there's a rare opportunity for ad space on the front page of Yahoo Finance. For $10 million, 10 million, for real, for $10 million, you can buy this tiny little box. But we need to know by 11 o'clock. It's currently 10.15. And yes, that's a true story. We clearly didn't have all the information we needed to be sure we were making a good decision. It would have been easier to bow out because we weren't 100% sure. But in business, you can't do that. You have to take the known and unknown data, make a judgment call, and act on it. We decided to go for it. We proceeded to buy the button and outperformed our competition fourfold. It's absolutely critical women have the ability to, to take calculated risk with imperfect information. Poker allows you to practice taking those kinds of risks again and again. Let's say I get dealt a pair of queens. Now, I know those are great cards, but I don't know what everyone else has, and I don't know the cards coming out on the table. If I want a shot at winning this hand, I need to bet aggressively out of the gate, even though I don't know the other cards on the table. Realizing that made me a much better poker player. A few weeks after I was playing poker with my guy friends, I actually decided to host a poker night. This time, it's me, some of my guy friends, and even some of my girlfriends. This time, I wasn't even nervous. I put myself out there. I bet aggressively and even bluffed. And it paid off. I ended with everyone's chips. That difference between the first time I played poker with a group of guys and the second was huge. I had somehow found this version of myself who wasn't afraid to go all in. Now in that example, Juliet was dealt a pair of queens. Great cards. It's pretty easy to be confident in that kind of moment. But in life, you don't always get dealt the best cards. Which brings us to the third big thing poker can teach women. How to act with confidence all the time, not just when you're dealt a winning hand. In poker, the way you win when you don't have the best hand is by bluffing. When I was learning poker, bluffing was the hardest part to learn, the part that required the most confidence. At first, if I got bad cards, I just immediately fold. But pretty soon I realized that everyone else around me, and it's almost always the boys, are bluffing too. The first time I bluffed and won, I was so excited. I wanted to tell everyone, I bluffed, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> Once I started winning by bluffing, that's when poker became less scary. Chances are, if you're at a table with eight other people, you probably don't have the best hand there. And so the goal is to get other people out. If you're gonna bet tentatively and they have okay cards too, they're gonna stay in. But if you bet like you have the nuts, which is a poker term for the best hand possible on the table, <laughs> they'll likely fold. When we talk about building confidence, that's what confidence looks like. At the poker table, bluffing isn't lying or cheating. It's acting confident in a negotiation in order to increase your chances of winning. And women need to learn to do this. One of the things I discovered when I became an options trader early in my career is there is no such thing as the real price. The price is just what two people agree on in a given moment. Bluffing and poker is just setting the price. Here's how much it will cost you to look at my cards to see if you win. Women need to practice setting the price and taking control of the power dynamic in a given situation. Poker is an excellent tool to help them practice do that.
<laughs> now, we've just scratched the surface of what poker can teach you. There's also capital allocation, knowing how to take a loss, estimating numerical odds, reading other people, understanding patterns, and how to call BS. <laughs> Thanks to poker, these aren't just lessons I've learned in theory. They're skills I practice every single time I play. If I play just an hour a week at an average of 30 hands an hour, that's over 1,500 practice sessions a year. There are other tools out there for building skills, building confidence, and empowering women, but this one works faster than anything else out there. And it's free and available to everyone. Right now, you could download a poker app or pick up a deck of cards and play with family and friends. I'll never know what Juliet's life would have looked like if she hadn't learned to play poker. But I know that because she's a poker player, she won't just have skills that took me years or even decades to learn. She'll be armed with an approach to the world that will help her reach whatever goal she sets for herself for the rest of her life. Wherever she sits at a table, she'll play to win. She won't be afraid to take calculated risks. She'll act with confidence, no matter the circumstances. You can imagine how that makes me feel as a mom. And now, imagine how different our world would be if one million, or 10 million, or 100 million more young women learned those lessons before graduating high school or college Imagine how different our workplaces, our culture, our entire society would be if we started teaching poker to our daughters and not just to our sons. <laughs> yeah. And that brings us back to the family poker tournament. <laughs> I've been dealt a pair of threes, and my older brother John has been betting really strangely. The final card has come out on the table, and we've both gone all in. We turn our cards over, and he's been dealt a pair of threes, too. Now, the chances of that happening are less than one in 20,000. So we decide it's fate, and the family poker tournament ends in a tie, which is nice, but it would have been more fun to win. <laughs>